excellent coffee. All right, hi there. This is Clarion, and today we are going to be drinking coffee, having a bedhead Saturday, and most importantly, looking at memoization and caching. So basically, uh, if you're not sure about memoization, um, it's an optimi optimization technique for a specific form of caching where we can store expensive results and then, um, and then return the cache result uh, if the same input occurs again. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? So if we have a function, let's say that takes a lot of runtime in our application uh, when it's running when it's running its, its, its results, and then let's say the function is, is verbose and we're using it quite often in our, in our application. Uh, we don't necessarily, maybe in certain situations, we don't necessarily need to be running everything that's happening in our in our function, right? Especially the expensive stuff that the, the things that are going to be taking a long time, right? That's what I mean by expensive, uh, or uh, like the, our, our runtime. And let's say though we do want to be implementing this function, so we can use memoization to store the results and then check so that let's say if our app wants our function to run in the exact same way again and we don't necessarily need to in that case uh, run the extenuous code we can use cache so that ev when it's being fired over and over again in that same way because we've already implemented that uh, that the first time and we've managed to store our results in this cache we don't each every time that the application is going to be executing this code uh, we, we're going to be saving. We're going to be saving a lot of time, right? Because we're we're not going to have to each time then re-execute that code, because this is the problem. Obviously, w well, with JavaScript is that it's not a neural network. Obviously, right? It's not AI. It doesn't have a memory storage base. It's just a set of commands in a script. It's an aw it's awesome and it's amazing what you can do with it. Of course, but uh, it's important. It's important, of course, to create smart code, not just code, but in our applications, we want to be efficient and we want to make sure that we're enhancing the performance and memoization and, and caching, store, and being able to store our results, a technique like this is very powerful and definitely worth the video and, and the time. So, okay, so if that makes a bit more sense, and that's awesome. Um, if not, don't worry at all because we are going to also, we're going to be looking at a function now, we're going to be writing out a function, and then we're going to take this function and give it some context and improve its performance and enhancement with memoization. Uh, so I have our text editor over here, which is basically just a HTML file uh, with the title, which you saw had that cool style that, uh, you know, style things up a bit. And our script, okay. So it's gonna be pretty, pretty stripped down over here, uh, and we'll keep it. We'll try to keep things uh, very simple. So we have a function. We'll create a function, and let's call it building. And we're gonna give it the parameter of tasks, okay. And and basically, the analogy that I'd like to make with memoization for this example is: let's say that we are uh, we own a construction company. And JavaScript is our employees, and the building here, it's like what we're doing, all right? It's what we're working on, and we have our tasks, okay? So let's say that we have, uh, we have a bunch of things to do, and we tell our employee, all right, go to the site, and these are the things that you have to do. This is our function, right? The, the set of commands that you need to, that you need to do. Uh, and one of the things that you need to do is that if the pipes aren't are, are broken or there's some issues with the pipes in this building that you're working on, then dispatch, go back to the factory, all right? So we can just say dispatch to the factory. So get the stuff, so drive back to the factory, get the things you need to fix the pipes, then, then come back and return to your tasks and until the work and then make your tasks finished so work is complete okay and let's console.log then and then log it out and then when you're done that you know write in your log so you get paid the hours of work right so we have building and then task we can just say and then make sure you sign out 
So Bob, all right, that's our guy. So why don't we take this now and then let's just run this, this function in our console. So what do we get when we run this function? We need to save because we're not getting anything. Okay, so we get dispatch to the factory. So that means our worker, you know, he listened to us. He saw the pipes weren't working. He went to the factory. And then here he is, Bob, and the work is complete. Okay, that's great. So let's, and let's say that this was day one, right? But it's not a one-day type of job, right? There's going to be a lot, of, a lot more days of work that's going to be involved here. And we're going to add a little space just so we can see this better got a comma so that means we're gonna want let's say a second day and a third day it's gonna take three days to finish the job you know to fix this building so let's say this he Bob works for three days so we execute this command we tell Bob what to do Bob goes off to do his thing dispatch to the factory day one Bob work is complete dispatch to the factory day two Bob work is complete. so day three Boom. All right. So it looks like he's done all of his work for the three days. We should be happy, right? <coughs> but when we count the hours of work that he did, we say, hey, wait a minute. Bob, you did a great job, but why were you always dispatching to the factory? And Bob will say, well, that's because I had to go get my supplies to fix the pipes each time. Well, we can say, well, Bob, why didn't you just leave your supplies with you at the construction site? Why were you going back and forth every time? That's not, that's, you know, that's a lot of extra time and it's invaluable time, company time. Bob would be like, oh yeah, well, you didn't tell me. There it is, okay? So Bob doesn't, Bob's great, just like JavaScript's great, but if you don't tell, if you don't let Bob know, then Bob's just going back and forth. So what can we do to actually fix this situation where we can get Bob to do the work uh, complete the task and but actually leave his stuff where it needs to go leave you know leave the work at work and so he doesn't have to go back and forth all the time so the first thing is that we drink a little bit more coffee because <laughs> I need that all right and then back here over here in our code what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a cache we're gonna use memoization so we create a cache by setting it to an object an empty object all right then in our function, what we can do is uh, we can create a conditional statement now and we can say if our tasks are in the cache. And in is just, it's checking, in is to check basically, uh, it's gonna check in our, op in our object. So this is pretty much the same as writing cache.tasks, okay? So if this is true, if we have tasks in cache, if that information has been stored, we could just, we don't need Bob to go back to the fact, go back to the dispatch and do all the things to get, to get the equipment, right? Because he already has the equipment. So there's no reason for him to go back and forth, right? So we can just say, if the tasks are in the cache, then we can just return. We only need to return is the cache, right? Because that's going to have our tasks. Now that's the stuff that Bob needs to do, okay? Otherwise, if it's not, then yeah, okay, if the pipes aren't working, Bob, go dispatch to the factory and then do what you got to do, okay? Uh, and for the return over here, now we have to remember that our we can return the cache of the tasks and we can by we can do that by making it equal to our tasks plus what we need to do and we don't forget to close that okay so before right when we ran this code bob would go to the factory on day 1 goes to the factory then at the end of the day he logs out what he did work, the work is complete then day 2 he went back to factory to get the stuff, work is complete, then he went back again on day three, right? 
But now, what we're now when we ha when we set up a storage for Bob, a little bit of memory, so Bob, you know, he can remember the situation a bit better. When we refresh, look at that. So now, day one, what happened? What happened here? So in this situation, now we're looking back at our logs and we're saying, all right, we're calculating our expenses, uh, our expense report, and we're saying, okay, Bob went to dispatch to the factory because the pipes weren't working. The work is complete. Day two. The work is complete. Day three, the work is complete. That's awesome, right? Because now we didn't have to have all that extra time. And imagine, let's say this, this like, let's say the factory is like a two-hour drive. Now Bob is saving us two hours, you know, at like hundreds of dollars for our company so that he, because he now had the proper instructions to leave, you know, to leave his cash. And for us to let Bob know to do that, we have to create this cache and store this information, you know. And like that, uh, we can save a lot of time, okay? So once again, that's, you know, and that's always Bob. But let's say, for example, if this was Susie, and let's say on day two, Bob gets sick on day one, so he calls Susie and we execute this again, we're going to see that in the first time we see, we see that Bob dispatched to the factory, day one, Bob work is complete. Dispatched to the factory, again, Susie work is complete, log. Susie went back to the factory. Now, Susie went back because she didn't have the memory in her cache. She doesn't know to add that, you know, to leave that the stuff is already there, so she went back because she, Bob forgot to tell her. You know, there's no communication happening between Bob and Susie. And with that, we can see now the beginning of how important memoization can be when it comes to an app. Because imagine, you know, if let's say it was three or four second, you know, an expensive function and it was taking a lot of runtime, uh, you could be saving a lot of time on your, on your performances and your applications. And anyway, I thought that would be a fun and interesting analogy to look at. Hope you enjoyed this. It was fun to do this, and I'm going to leave the, uh, the code and a written explanation uh, below. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, bye.